You know, son of a bitch, there is always something wrong when I start my streams. Damn it. Oh, shit. I tried to show the nice promo video that I made for uh, Who Slide, and uh, it, then the sound just didn't work. Uh, fuck. <laughs> well, welcome to the shit show, on it. How are you, sir? I do. I and I fucking knew that. Uh, ignorant American. I am. I kick. So I kicked it off with a uh, with a, uh, a a technical fail, and I kicked it off with a uh, cultural fail. So now we're at two. Let's see how many fails I can do. Uh, they're saying that they can't hear me or that, or that I'm super quiet. Or something. All right, I will fix that. And I'm not super quiet, so. All right, how about now? Say some stuff is now. It is it better now? Is it better now? Better. All right. Better, yay. Yeah, that's because I had to... Uh, I really have to get my audio shit. Uh, uh, yeah, Pepperfish uh, says that you need to turn to turn him, I guess, me on. But well, you know, I'm a married man, so that that doesn't stop us from being turned on by you. So well, the night the night is still young. <laughs> and you know what? I feel like a real shithead that you actually have to correct me on your name. I feel like I should know it already. Pronounce it one more time for me. A meat. Yeah. Ah, is it? There you go. Is it? Uh, is it Serper? Yes. Ah, that part I got right. Hell yeah. Uh, well, dude, welcome to the show, my friend, and welcome to everybody uh, to another episode of my little slice of the internet, Second Order Chaos. My name is Rando, and I do this every Tuesday, every Thursday. Uh, literally, this is just a vanity exercise. Uh, for me, I just really enjoy hearing myself talk. Yeah, that's what the, that's what you know infosec Twitter is for. Oh yeah, oh it's the best thing for my vanity. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm and like I just get to see and hear myself all the goddamn time. Uh, so yeah, dude, welcome. I'm so I'm so excited to have you on. Um, we were talking a little bit uh, before. Uh, before we went live here and I, I said my main reason why I have people on here is just people I find interesting right interesting okay third fourth fail is me not pronouncing shit maybe that's maybe that's that um, failing is like we, we came here to fail you know I'm enough, man. <laughs> I'm I'm just practicing for uh, for the safe mode version of who slide honestly which oh, right. you right. Yeah. you competed in last year, did you not? Uh, in Vegas, do you remember? I, 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 you know, I I was there in body, but not really in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you being there. I was yeah, like, that was uh, that was a weird that was a weird period of time uh, <laughs> around that time last year. So let's uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no video that I know of. The only video I know that we have is a showering uh, Amanda Berlin with $1 bills. <laughs> because that's how Steve D3 rolls. He just has wads of dollar bills rolled up yeah, in his pockets. No, no one showered me, be it in uh, $1 bills or other <laughs> things. Unfortunately or luckily, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure. I'm not sure what I'm aiming for right now. But... <laughs> well, dude, welcome. So um, do me a favor and like, not that you need an introduction, but introduce yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, okay, so uh, I'm Amit. Uh, I'm originally from... Uh, <laughs> no, originally don't, from... Say, don't say Amit because then <laughs> I'm going to repeat that later and feel like even more of a dick. Okay, so it's okay. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm, orig I'm originally from Israel, which is uh, what I always uh, always say the first thing because people don't understand where the weird name comes from, uh, or sometimes people pick on my weird my weird accent, so that that comes out as well sometimes. Uh, yeah, so um, originally from Israel, been living in America for uh, two weeks, sorry, uh, uh, less than a week shy of uh, of uh, four years. 
so uh yeah the, uh so on august 2nd it would be uh my fourth anniversary of living in america uh i work for uh, a company called cyber reason i'm the vp of security strategy there which is a fancy uh title that just means that i get to work with a lot of awesome people on awesome stuff i guess um and uh i used to speak a lot in conferences and 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 i am uh very uh vocal uh as a as a, as a shit poster on twitter i guess yeah i guess that's me right no no you are you're you are um i don't think i have you i have a list on my twitter of like prolific shit posters and if you're not on it that that's going to be a crime because uh no that's <laughs> You are you are hands down one of the smartest people that I've uh, that I've interacted with, um, followed for long before we we got friendly with each other. Um, but uh, in a, mostly it's because you're you have a very sharp sense of humor, which I enjoy. Um, oh wow! Yeah, people usually hate it. So hey, at least someone <laughs> likes it. I have never. First That's of all, in for tonight, I guess. <laughs> First of all, yes, uh, Zephyr, uh, my, my, my buddy Zephyr Fish from Scotland. Uh, I don't know why I felt necessary to say he's from Scotland, but he is. Uh, he says shit posting is life. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you literally have it in, in your bio, which I can respect. So uh, you said, what, two weeks shy of, of, uh, uh, no, of being here? Like five, five days, something like that. No, not five, three, four days, four days shy. Four days shy of yeah. four years. Um, wait, speak, uh, see, I, have, I have so many different things now. Speaking of shit posting and things, uh, and speaking of Zephyr Fish, did you see what he did with, uh, with his recent, with the recent, uh, what was that, the, the RCE Zephyr or, or whatever that thing was? Um, some, some big vulnerability came out. I forget what it was. And he, him and I guess his buddies went out and said, we have an, at, we have a functioning POC. Uh, everybody go download it. And wasn't it just like a Rick roll? Yes. Uh, CVE. Oh, that was you? That was him? <laughs> that oh was, my God. That that was <laughs> <laughs> and what yeah, I, yeah, I saw that. That was funny. <laughs> oh my God. And what I didn't admit at the time was I fell for it. I, and like, I, because I, tr you know why? Cause I fucking trusted you. You Scott bastard. I, uh, I was like, Oh, my boy did it. Like, I know that guy. He has a POC for like a, a big CVE that affects my clients that they literally came to me and was like, yo, we need you to do something about this. Like we're scared. And I shared it in our threat research room at work thinking it was legitimate. And I fell for the whole point of don't just download fucking code from GitHub and run it. So I, I, I had a, I had a prank plan for a while. But you know, I'm 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 not gonna do it. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share it. I'm gonna open source it, and uh, someone else is probably gonna do it. Uh, but I wanted to do something similar, like say, hey, I have a POC for that really rad uh, vulnerability, and uh, like a Windows vulnerability, and I just wanted to um, create uh, a, a, a Python a, a Python script that does a lot of nothing like printing out like stupid shit and then at the end it calls uh the windows uh undocumented well it was documented by the uh by the authors of not Petya. i think it was not yeah not Petya. uh np raise hard air which basically just crashes like violently crashes like blue screens the system it's an api call that it's it's its sole purpose is to crash the system <laughs> and, and just have someone just like run it look at some like you know, leave shit printed on their screen and then boom, like blue screen. I'm like, oh my God, it's blue screen. It must have worked. So, you know, you would reboot the machine and run it again and it'll blue screen again. So like that's, that's, that's some, that's some, uh, and now, uh, yeah. now there's going to, there's going to be a tweet it's, from it's everyone's idea. Now, <laughs> this is not my idea anymore. Zephyr is literally coding it right now. Um, yeah. Oh god damn it! I messed up my video too. Jesus, Danny, stop! Uh, Anti raise hard error. Um, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, or like, I mean, honestly, you could just do something as like just have something that just does that runs a, a screen cap video of like 
a compile like a make compile or some shit and just change all the colors and like people will still think it's doing shit um because like who really understand like it, well so i'm not much of a coder um does anybody still do like compile and make install and shit like that for things yeah okay like it's a thing all right, because like I used to, so when I when I first started security, and got so was getting to know all of this stuff, I thought I would learn more by not just like doing like the simple unzip and things like that or install. I would compile everything from source because I thought it was better, and I would learn more. And it turns out I just caused myself more pain because like who really fucking understands what all that shit is going going in front of you? Yeah, that that, that reminded me. So when I was. So I'm, I'm going to be 34 in a few months. Uh, but when I was 13, 13, yeah, 13, um, uh, uh, I, I started like really like hacking shit and, 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 and like I really wanted to know how things work behind the scenes. So I had a friend of mine who was a year older that introduced me to FreeBSD. So it was the first uh, uh, non-Windows like non DOS or Windows operating system I used when I was 13. So I got FreeBSD and, and, and with FreeBSD, at least back then, I haven't used uh, FreeBSD in ages. Um, you had to compile everything. And that was also in the days of, of 56K dial up modems, at least, you know, in Israel, well, back then. Uh, and uh, that was a pain. Like I had, uh, what did I have that? a Pentium 3. 450 megahertz i think oh lord <laughs> yeah that, that's like that's ages ago and uh and um like if you wanted sound support like sound card support you had to like recompile the kernel because it was a, a um sacrifice a goat <laughs> yeah it was a monolithic kernel so you had to compile everything and, and and every every compilation would take like a whole night so um i would like work on all of that shit like like just a hodgepodge of, of, of code and drivers and stuff that I wasn't fully, you know, I didn't fully understand back then. And uh, and I would do, like I would run make and go to sleep. And then apparently sometime in like 3 a.m. it failed miserably and I would wake <laughs> up. And I would wake up and I was like, oh yeah, I have sound support now. I can play MP3s. And then it would be like, oh, error code one, fuck you. <laughs> so then like, it would take me like, you know, three, four, sometimes a week, three, four days or a week to get sound support. <laughs> that's how I started my uh, my affair with uh, the lovely uh, you know the lovely world of uh, of make. Right, I, and I, that's what um, actually when I was going through school, which was a, a horribly shitty school. Like I didn't go to a regular college like uh, uh, like we have here. Um, I went to some like technical two year school for like IT and networking, and I thought I was hot shit because they gave you a Linux course that lasted like a month. And if you got your Linux Plus, you didn't have to take the final. And I was like, hell yeah. And I got it. I didn't understand what the fuck was happening. And I never used it as my main system because that was, this was like back in 2002 or three or some shit. And you would have to like just getting any driver to work on anything. And I was like, nah, 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 I, I give up. Um, what got you in? What, that was painful back then. Dude, days. right? Like, and I was like, and I, so people thought I was a goddamn wizard uh because i passed this this examination and it never expires so i think i still have it on my resume oh that's <laughs> great so you're like fully certified to run stuff on like linux kernel version 2.4 yeah, or something whatever it was eight, right? whatever the kernel was 18 years ago i'm an expert <laughs> um, run all of the exploits all of them yeah. <laughs> so what 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 you to hacking like like what like what was the first time you got your hands on a computer and was like i i want to make this thing do what i wanted to do so um i i got my first computer i think when i was six or seven years old like before that i didn't have my own computer and and and, and again like as much as computers were expensive in the united states in like the early 90s which is when i grew up uh, 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 just imagine how expensive they were on uh, uh, an armpit of a country in the Middle East, <laughs> where it's basically an island and it costs a fortune to import uh, every single thing over there. Um, so I didn't have my first computer until I was, I think, I think six, six years old, I think. But before that, I had friends who had computers and my uncle had an IBM XT 
and uh, and and like I remember like uh, when my mom used to go to my uncle's house, I would I would go just to mess around with his computer, which was running DOS, and I would some somehow manage to like run Doom or something, or maybe that was at a later time. I forget. It's been it's been a while. And uh, and and then when I got and when I got my my own computer, my parents bought me my first computer, a, a lovely 386. Um, uh, it came with QBasic, uh, which was uh, an ancient programming language. It came with DOS version five, I think that was. And I didn't know QBasic, but I had a neighbor who was a few years older than me. And he had a book about QBasic. And I borrowed that book from him. And I just started like messing around with, with basic code. And I managed to, to get the computer to do what I want. And it was like, oh my God, that's cool. Uh, and then I got into that. Uh, so I, I, I tried learning uh, 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 to program, uh, but I was too lazy to really like get into it so I was amen like, brother I'm it. yeah i'm gonna leave it for a few years i'm just gonna do other things with my computer i'm just gonna play games uh and then when um uh when i when i uh when i got you know the the internet because you know you had to get the internet i didn't i didn't have a, a modem even and uh when i got my modem i was like oh my god i like how can i how can I mess with other people? Like, how can I, <laughs> how can I cause someone else's computer to uh, to blue screen? And by that time, it was Windows 95. Like, it had a, a, a an IP stack built in the operating system. Like, it was more modern. And uh, I don't know if you remember those, but remember Nukes, Win Nukes? No, I think it was a little bit before my time. So with Win Nukes, it would exploit some vulnerability in Windows. I don't even remember which because there were so many of them <laughs> and uh and uh all you need all you needed is someone else's ip address and it was like a shitty visual basic window mm -hmm. and it had like a background of, of like an atomic explosion and you would type in someone's ip address and hit nuke you had like one button nuke, yeah and that you know that machine would blue screen like over the internet magically oh jeez and when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> like that, that blew my mind. Uh, and then I wanted to know more about networking and how things work and what are packets and how things get from here to there. And, uh, and then when I was 13, as I said, I, I installed FreeBSD and, uh, and that was, and that was like crazy because like I could actually mess with things and, 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 and. And especially things around uh, uh, around uh, 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 like TCP/IP stack, and uh, around that time, I think when I was 14, uh, they started rolling out uh, cable internet in in Israel. Um, so before they actually before they were able to sell it to people for money, they had to beta test it, and 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 getting in the the beta was like insane. Like it was pure luck. And there were wait lists because remember, like your only options were either like a regular dial-up modem, or mm. if you're filthy rich, you would have an ISDN line, which if you had only one line that was 64 kilobits, if you had two of them, you could double it, and that would be like 128 uh, 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 kilobits. Uh, and then you know suddenly you have cable, which was insane and and uncapped back then because it was for the beta, you would get an uncapped cable connection. Mm. So somehow I got in the beta. I don't even remember how. I just remember that my mom woke me up one summer. It was in the in the summer holiday, uh, uh, and my mom my mom woke me up and said, uh, "There's someone asking for you on the phone. They're from the cable company." I'm like, Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> I got out of bed and I ran to the phone. They're like, "Yeah, um, uh, we would like to sign you up for a beta." Um, when, when when are you home? And I'm like always. I'm I'm 14. <laughs> like, I'm 14 in the summer. Like where would I be going? Um, <laughs> that, that, uh, sounds and, like a Fed trap uh, or something. Hey. Yeah. So they came and and, and 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 I got a cable modem. And at that point, I was like, wait a minute. I have an uncapped cable connection. Everybody else has a 56k modem. I should sell web hosting. <laughs> 
So, uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I actually I I I, I took a bunch of old uh, computers from friends, uh, like old Pentium ones, and I built like a Windows server and a Linux server and a FreeBSD server, and I and I sold, I sold uh, uh, hosting, web hosting, and like that was two thousand and one, I think. And some of those websites were those old PHP Nuke uh, websites mm -hmm. and, and some like PHP crap like of, of the early 2000s, the beginning of the web 2.0. And, uh, uh, and some of those websites started getting hacked or, uh, you know, the, 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 the MySQL databases uh, would be corrupted by like trolls. I'm like, oh, how did they do that? How did they get there? Right. And, and and that's when I really got into it. So I started reading and, and, and experimenting. Where did you get your, your I mean, because this is back, you know, 2001 to like early, early 2000s. Where were you getting your information? Like where, where were you learning from? Um, the Internet. I mean, I, um, I, I, I had that friend, that one friend that, and he was like, on a league of his own, uh, I, I, we lost touch, but I think he works for Google today. He's like the shit. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a core developer of one of uh, of one of like the like Node.js or something. One of those languages. I think he's a core developer or something. Like the guy is like a legit genius. And uh, he taught me a little bit uh, about like sockets and how to uh, how to write raw socket code with I think it was TCL back then was a disgusting language <laughs> and uh and uh and it was either that or the internet and you know irc groups and and, and i would just like it wasn't it was even before google i would yahoo search yeah. and i would use um ask jeeves.com alta vista <laughs> and alta vista yeah and um and I, I i did i did those things mainly i mean and 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 somehow and, and a lot of it was just like uh, uh trial and error basically i would install something and then like for example i would install for someone someone wanted like a forum or something like php bb or something and i installed it for him but uh of course uh, uh all of the all of the databases all, all of the databases of all of the customers uh uh uh, uh were running under root because i was 14 <laughs> sure why not yeah it, it, yeah <laughs> and um uh so it was a lot of trial and error like oh yeah yeah running things as root will probably make <laughs> that panda so i should probably not do it and like that's that's basically how i started learning security like oh that's hardening what's that yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you guys want to come in this? Yeah, here you go. Everybody gets super user accounts. Um, when did you come over to the U.S.? Uh, so, I mean, to live here uh, four years ago, almost, mm -hmm. as I said. And uh, but I used to come here. Uh, I think my first time. Yeah, my first time in America was uh, when I was seventeen. So funny enough, my my sister actually used to live a mile and a half from where I live today. <laughs> And, uh, and I came to visit her, uh, so I live right outside of Boston, and uh, uh, I came to visit her for the first time when I was 17, and um, I'm, I'm also a British citizen, my mom is British, and I also oh. thought that I'm going to end up, yeah, I always thought, I'm, I'm going to, here, I can, I can pull my Jason Bourne trick, like all of my passports. Uh, <laughs> Alright, yeah, if, so. if you guys are going to take screenshots, now's the time to do it. There we go, Jason Bourne. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so, uh, so I always thought I'm gonna end up in in, in London because I really like London and, and and I have family there. And uh, and then I came uh, here to Boston for the first time when I was uh, 17, and I just like I fell in love with the place. And I said, if I could ever end up here, mm -hmm. I would definitely do that. And. Um, and uh, when I joined Cyber Reason uh, almost six years ago, I started in Israel. We're an Israeli company, uh, but um, our HQ is here in Boston. So uh, when the when the CEO and and the co-founder of Cyber Reason, which is a good friend of mine, whom I also worked before in the Israeli government, uh, said, "Hey, so um, how would you like to move to Boston?" I was like, "Sign me the fuck, fuck up." up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh 
And after my uh, my visa application was rejected for the first time, <laughs> uh, it yeah it it got accepted the second time and uh, and yeah and uh, and we've been here as I said for four years and a little over than two years ago uh, we actually became uh, uh, lawful permanent residents or green card holders or immigrants which isn't a popular word today. Uh, so I guess if, uh, I don't know if, if there's not going to be a, a, a horrible, uh, a political development, which will, uh, cause me to be, to getting kicked out, I guess I'm here. So, yeah. Um, so, and, and I, I always like asking this question of, of people who are, have, have come here relatively recently. Um, what struck you so much about like just either the U S or, or Boston in particular versus where you were in Israel? Like what made you fall in love with it that, that hard? So uh, um, it's actually a lot of people don't know that, but um, culturally, Israel is is trying to see itself as like the fifty first state. Oh so no! Like a lot of a lot of trends, a lot of trends. Like for example, I grew up on American television, so like I I watched probably everything that you watched. Like mm -hmm. the the channels in Israel, like you would get all of the American shows like subtitled in Hebrew, and like that's that these are the shows I grew up on. So like almost probably everything you watched i watched too on the other side of the world in english mm -hmm. uh and uh and and you know a lot of the trends and 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 music and, and culturally like israel is very influenced uh by the us but there's also like a slight delay so like i think we're just like israel is just getting like jordash jeans or no, I'm, I'm <laughs> check out this but, swatch uh, yeah <laughs> Oh, my wife loves them. So, uh, <laughs> I got snap so, uh, bracelets for days, bitches. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so when I came here, uh, you know, obviously I speak the language, and um, and and but when I came here, what 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 struck me is, you know, Israel is is pretty much a desert with a beach. Mm. Like that's what it is. We only have two seasons. Uh, it's summer, and holy mother fuck, it's hot. It's summer. <laughs> right. Like, just seasons that we have. And uh, I don't do well in the heat, which is one of the reasons why I like it here so much, because, you know, the winters are miserable. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to be in heaven now. You're like, oh, this is like yeah, the I, antithesis. Like the, first time I saw, the first time I saw actual snow was, you know, right after I moved here when I was 30. Like that was the first time I ever saw snow. And um, what was and that like for time. you? To uh, actually, I mean, well, I mean, so like, I mean, I, I imagine you saw it on like American uh, TV shows and shit, right? Like you had to. Yeah, I, 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 I knew what snow is. Right. <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't touched it. I haven't like seen it. So that was, that was like crazy. Like the first time it snowed when we were here, uh, like we were living, um, uh, we were living in an apartment, in our apartment in the city back then. And it snowed and like, and, and it, it was insane. Like it was snowing hard. And and usually like I don't know why, but around this area like the first snow is usually crazy, like it's oh, yeah. insane. And um, and like the streets were empty, and 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 and, and my wife and I, oh my god, let's go walk in the snow. Let's go walk in the snow. <laughs> and we and we walked in the snow, and it was like magical, and we're so excited, and you know, we're, we're fully grown adults, and um, and uh, and like we 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 were so excited, and then on our way back. Uh, on our way back home, uh, we get into our apartment building, and and you know we're desert people. We sure. don't know what snow is, right? right? We just experienced it for the first time, and my wife had some snow on her boots. And as we walked into the warm uh, building, it melted instantly. And the moment her foot touched the floor, she slipped oh, and geez. and broke her arm in like three different places. Welcome to Boston, motherfucker. <laughs> yes. And and three months and three months into living in America, coming from a situation where in 30 years I've never seen a doctor's bill, like I've never paid a doctor. Oh like, Jesus. A concept which is completely foreign to me. Uh no pun intended. Um I had to learn how the system works in like three hours. So I sat and read like the insurance policy and and what what it entails and i got exposed into the lovely uh world of deductibles and co-pays and 
oh my god and uh and and yeah so now all of my american friends are coming to ask me questions about health insurance yeah i was about to say i am 38 years old i am from new fucking jersey i have lived here my entire life i've never left the u.s i still don't know how that shit works well it's like car insurance but for your body parts <laughs> that, oh that's pretty well, much shit. it <laughs> I yeah. should have talked to you sooner then. No, like, and it gets even more complicated uh, when I had my son. My son is five years old. And then I got, well, I got married and then the son came. It wasn't like, oh, shotgun. Um, we were married for at least a year uh, before he I came along. I wasn't, even, I wasn't even insinuating. <laughs> <laughs> really don't know the explanation. Well, this is a show. I give explanations. I tell stories. And, and <laughs> so then every single job, because I've had the bang up of uh, experience to work at a lot of startups <laughs> that like to sell themselves. And I have to keep picking new insurance every single fucking job. And I'm like, I don't know, like, which one should I should the, I have the PPO and the fucking like, I don't know. It, do I pick one and then my family dies? Like, is this what this is? And I still don't understand all of that. So you yeah, being. And, and it's not thing like that. If you change a job, like your entire insurance changes, like that's another weird thing. Yeah. And, and I don't know. I, I don't want to get political. Like, I love, Let's... I really enjoy, I enjoy talking about politics and I love politics and I watch the news constantly. Yeah. Uh, especially now. But with, I think that, I think that if there is anything that this whole uh, COVID situation uh, uh, showed us is that maybe it's time to change, like, the system here. Maybe it's time you think to so. do something. You would think so. It, doesn't make any sense this is this is crazy like this is insane <laughs> and yet we all especially in america have very short memories so once they finally get a vaccine give us another year down the road two years some asshole is gonna vote no be like oh no everything is fine the way it is because we forget what happened um do uh, so Hex, I, I'm so curious about the whole snow thing, though. Did it? I just, I just have one question about that. Um, did it? Did it feel the way you thought it was going to feel? Like, did it? Like, there was anything surprising so you know, about it? You know what? I just remembered. So here's the thing: in Israel, in 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 the northernmost part of the country, there is a mountain that borders with with Lebanon. It's uh, um, it's called the Hermon Mountain. It's right on the border of Israel and Lebanon, and it's one of the only places in the country where it snows. And it has to be like really cold and mm -hmm. like you have to have ideal conditions and it snows. And I just remember that my, my, my parents took me there when I was 10, when it snowed mm -hmm. and I tried to ski <laughs> and I tried to ski when I was 10 and I fell and I tried to get up. And then when I tried to get up, I hit myself in the face with the, with the ski. Jesus, right? you, you so, and your wife are perfect for I, each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I actually, you know what? When I, I just remember this, I like, I, I completely had this like blocked out in my memory. Repressed. So I saw snow when I was ten, but I didn't remember shit. So twenty years later, I saw snow for the first time. Let's say that we, I saw snow for the first time. No, no, fair there. enough. Uh, it, it felt really weird. Like it felt, it, it, it like, I was wearing like heavy boots, and and it was like, uh, 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 uh you know, it was like this thick of a pile of snow on the <clears throat> on the pavement and as i was walking on it it made this like weird sound and and, and squishiness that i didn't expect yeah. so like i was like my god i am 30 like people live here like why do i find it so strange <laughs> it, it, it was it was really weird like really really weird sure yeah no i mean i i i get that from so i have friends that are live in louisiana like deep deep south louisiana like lafayette and they've never been up north that so that so they wouldn't know either like they wouldn't know what that but like it snows maybe like once in you know every three years or something like that and if they've never been in a particular part of louisiana where it does that they got no fucking idea and even then when it does they get like a dusting, right? Like yeah. just a lit, like they don't know, like their entire state shuts down and then they, they're messaging me going, we got snow and we saved it in the freezer. And I'm like, oh, you guys are fucking yeah. adorable. <laughs> uh, yeah, people in Israel used to do it also. Like they would go all the way north and they would bring like a bunch of snow in like uh, in a cooler 
just like to show people like here fucking um, frozen water <laughs> here uh since uh since being in the u.s um have you been back to uh israel yeah i've been i've been uh well you know when when the world isn't ending oh sure yeah uh I go a few times a year, and you know, obviously, uh, our R and D center is over there in Tel Aviv, which is the city I'm from. And uh, uh, so I, I do go there. Like my entire family is there. Uh, uh, so I, I do go there. I was there uh, right before this whole COVID shit show started. Sure. In, uh, December. Um, so yeah, I, I, I go there, and it's uh, it, it's it's miserable because you know it's hot. And then because of the jet lag, because Israel is seven hours, uh, seven hours <clears throat> ahead mm -hmm. of the coast. So when I get there, I'm like jet lagged for like three or four days. So I always go there for like a minimum of two weeks because I like, yeah, you, you yeah, know, you that, that's not out back. No. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah it, my parents were supposed to come and visit, but then COVID happened and, and, and they're not young. So, right. You know. um, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny because uh, um, the vi the video I tried to show you probably wouldn't have seen it, but before when I led into our stream starting was a promo video that I made for my contest. I run it. Well, you know, you've played it. Uh, um, um, who slides it anyway? And the first year, uh, I think the very first person to actually play it, the first year at DefCon 25 was one of the organizers of uh, B-Sides Tel Aviv. Um, and I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna mispronounce her name. I, I want to say... Karen? Was it? Is it Karen? Am yes. I? Yeah, Karen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so it is yeah, Karen. And she yeah. was lovely and delightful. And it like I, I, I remember every second of her performing. Um, and then she's actually been... I think she's performed at all of them so far because she comes back for DEF CON. Um, and B-Sides Tel Aviv is like top on my list of with the B-Sides oh, that I awesome. want to go to. I spoke, I spoke on the first one and second one. Uh, they're, they're awesome. Like the second one, I actually, uh, I flew, I flew. It, the first one was just before I moved here and the second one was after. So for the second one, I actually flew there uh, to speak. And that was when when not Petya happened, mm -hmm. and my my talk was the morning after, which you know the night before I didn't sleep, and it's on it's on YouTube. I'm like I'm a complete shit show. <laughs> I'm, I'm a mess. Uh, it was really weird. Like I had CNN and journalists from all over just like coming at me yeah. there at the con. It was it was surreal. But yeah, B sides Tel Aviv is great. Uh, a lot of the organizers are friends, good friends of mine, and uh, Cyber Reasons is, is sponsoring it. It's it's uh, it's 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 a great con. For for those of us who are like me, that like I desperately want to go there. Like I said, it's it's if it's not number one, it is in the top three. Um, for any of us that would go over there, like me, uh, I've been all across the United States, but I've never been out of the country. What are some things that would be, uh, I don't want to say weird, but like different for somebody who goes, who, have, who has never left the U.S. but goes to like his first out of country one is Israel. Like what are some things that I might well, find weird? Uh, the food is unbelievable. Yeah. Like the food is, I, I never appreciated. So that's going to sound shitty. But I never appreciated the food there until I moved to America. I oh, mean, sure. No, absolutely. There's a, of, there, there's a lot of great things. Like, you know, if, like there's a lot of things that are much better in America food-wise. But, um, like, in Israel, everything is, like, fresh and vegetables. And it's um, and, and you have so many restaurants, especially in, in, in Tel Aviv. Like, the food is... Tel Aviv is one of the best food cities in the world, in my opinion. Like, to in, for me, it's, like... You know, it's it's New York, it's London, Tokyo, and Tel Aviv. Like, for me. Right. Uh, not necessarily in, in that order. But, so the food is incredible. Um, but, you know how, how people say that New York is, like, crazy and people are, like, on edge and, like, sure. everything? So Israel is that, but times a million. <laughs> so, like, yeah, drivers are, like, super aggressive. Yeah. So, I live in, like, I lived in, in Boston... And now I live in the suburbs, but, you know, people say that drivers in Massachusetts are, like, the worst. Massholes. And, and yeah, and, like, when I when people ask me, like, how do you, how can you drive here in the city? And, like, how can you, I'm like, 
What are you talking yeah. about? This is like this, Switzerland. This is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, this is great. <laughs> uh uh because in israel like I, now i don't drive there anymore so like i drove there for years but now when i go there like imagine like i am in boston right yeah, yeah. and i go back there and i just i don't want to drive here this is this is too much for me <laughs> so uh, i was there uh, uh last april i was there uh one of my best friends who is actually speaking at defcon uh uh, uh this year uh uh he got married and i went there to be his best man and i and i and i i, I drove him around like i chauffeured him around in, in the day of his wedding and and, and and his bachelor party and everything and and you know when we got when we got to the venue and i gave him because i was driving his brother's car i gave him the keys and i was like i am never driving in this country again <laughs> like this this was the this was the last time i did your brother a solid he's my best friend but nope i'm not yep. gonna do Fuck that, that shit. um so so yeah and people are like always on edge because you know there's a war every five minutes right so uh it's 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 if you're not from there it's very different but it's also cool because people are like very relaxed and very you know nothing is like official and people are laid back and chill so that's that's another thing um, you you had mentioned that uh, you know you you had grown up watching you know American television and and that uh, and that uh, that that's how Israel is trying to fashion itself. So are they? Do they like? I I always want to ask this from somebody who's not from here. Do they like us? <laughs> like if an American goes well, yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, the weirdest. You'd see the weirdest thing. So like on, on Israeli Independence Day, like think about it like it's the equivalent of the 4th of July here mm -hmm. you'll see many people so like almost everyone puts like the Israeli flag on their car on Independence Day but you'll see a lot of people putting like the Israeli flag on one side and the American flag on the other oh, which geez. is really weird yeah yeah it's, it's Israelis are like America is like you know the model of perfection and like uh, oh wow you're American so cool oh honey uh, <laughs> yeah it's like it's 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 a thing and you have a lot of you know Americans uh, you know, American Jews that move from America to Israel. So there's a lot of that culture that they're bringing. So it's, 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 uh, Israel is, is, although it's on the other side of the world, it is very attached to America. Like you watch the evening news and you will see like things that are happening in like Missouri, like in the evening news of Israel, right. yeah. where we have like, I don't know, uh, 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 fight on this border yeah, and yeah. A clash on the other one and rockets falling on our houses and stuff but no we have to know what happened in missouri like right. it's really weird yeah like like they're like some 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 wendy's in the middle of missouri burnt down and now it's on the tel aviv news yeah it, it's 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 that it's exactly that it's really strange it's really strange well yeah man i mean and and that, and that just really drives home that like the world is so super small now Whereas opposed to like before, you know, when I was younger and like all you had was the BBSs and IRC and things like that, and everything felt so far away. Um, now it seems like everything is at at like the like the tips of your fingers, and 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 you can reach out. Like now I know you, somebody from Tel Aviv, and Karen I know, and I know somebody from Switzerland and Norway just because of things like DefCon, which is one of the awesome, like, which is why it hurts this year that it, that, you know, that, that we can't yeah. go there. Um, how do you, uh, going back to security for, for, for just a little bit, like I could, no, actually no, fuck security for a second. Talk about trying new things, like fuck all that. Uh, we could talk about that any other time. Um, trying new things, we talked about snow. Uh, my favorite, I don't think I'm ever gonna change it, the banner on my Twitter, is you from a video I saw trying a deep fried Oreo? Oh, the Oreos, right? With yes. The Oreos? Yes. Yeah, that was like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> we, like, your reaction was just so pure. <laughs> um, who... Yeah, because I always heard about it, right? And 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 you know, it, it's it's one of those things. Like, I've been living, as I said, I've been, I've been here for four years. Right. I've been here many times before. Whether it was when my sister still lived here, as I said, for 14 years, or when I came to work at at Cyprus, and like I used to come here a lot for, for work, uh, to, to for I, to our for our HQ, and so you know I've been here. I've, I I know, like I always felt at home in America. That's another thing. I always felt at home here. Good. Um, yeah, like even when I when I when I go to London and I know London very well, and you know I'm a citizen, and like no one asks me anything at the airport when I come in. Um, 
I still feel at home here rather than there, and it, it was always that way. But I only got a Costco membership to, uh, like when the pandemic started. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's those things like it's like an American staple you have to go to and you have to to be a member of. And like only now I have a Costco membership, and and it's like it's like it's those things you keep. Oh my god! Like <laughs> who needs who needs so much peanut butter? Like why? <laughs> It is it is jarring for an American who is used to shit being big and a lot of stuff. My I got my first Costco membership like four years ago, right before my son was born, and uh, and I went in. I was like, I thought this was a joke. <laughs> I thought this was like a fucking yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hollywood creation. Like what is? <laughs> yeah, when my wife and I went to Costco for the first time, I think it was something straight like straight like a like a scene out of Borat. Yeah. You know, when we walk, oh, America, look, big jar of the peanut butter. Like, that's how we felt. Like, my God, who needs, who needs so much peanut butter? Like, if you run out, just go and get another normal sized jar. Got, like, gotta save that, fun? gotta save that $2, man. Gotta save that $2 yeah. over your entire lifetime because that's what that fucking peanut butter is gonna last you. Funny you mentioned peanut butter because I fell in the same goddamn trap and my wife doesn't even eat peanut butter. And she's like, why? you keep buying it from fucking Costco of all places. I'm like, I don't know, baby, you never know. <laughs> could well, be a... I used to eat it with a spoon. I could go down that rabbit hole anytime. Oh, my my mouth just closed shut just thinking about that. Wait, you like peanut butter? Uh, no, I love peanut butter. Okay, so I'm I'm, I'm going to blow your mind. So, oh, shit. Um, uh, uh, do you have a Trader Joe's nearby you... your house? No, we're not that bougie, but one probably within an hour. Oh, within an hour. Yeah. Well, you have Amazon. So uh, there is an Israeli snack. So here's the thing. A lot of Americans are allergic to peanuts, right? It's a thing here. Yeah. I've never heard of a peanut allergy until I came to visit my uh, my sister uh, 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 many years ago. And um, there, in Israel, no one is allergic to peanuts because one of the first uh, 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 snacks that kids, like even babies, eat, um, it sort of looks like cheesy puffs but it's peanut butter okay and it's so good it's called bamba b-a-m-b-a -A. okay and it's 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 genius and it has this stupid name it doesn't have any meaning but it it's it they they called it in this name because it's easy for babies to say bamba mm -hmm. so i'm gonna look uh, it up right now bamba. Yeah, every israeli like dude this is like crack like this is so good every israeli kid like oh it's, up on those. it's literally got a picture of a baby on it Yep, <laughs> and it's so good. And and Trader Joe's actually are importing it, like under their own brand or, and packaging. But it's like legit made in Israel. Like, well, fuck. That's like, fuck Trader Joe's because my local Target has them. Well, there you go. Okay. Trader well, Joe's send, sells them like a big bag is like uh, like sixty cents or something, which is cheaper than Israel where it's made. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go get these the first thing tomorrow. Like. If my show wasn't so late at night, I would fucking go right now and go get them. Uh, Dude, all right, save an after later. Is, those things, like I stopped eating them because my like my cholesterol went off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I it, it's so good. Like I could devour those. Jesus, I just oh, I, I, I just posted a giant ass URL in there. Um, yeah. Don't worry, it's safe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and normally, like we have URLs like. Honestly, I, I think we still have URLs uh, not allowed by chat members, but really I should not be allowed because I'm the one that's going to post something like a fucking Zephyrfish exploit. Um, uh, well, shit, man. Um, so, okay, now we can go back to security for a little bit, but God damn, I want to try these peanut butter puff things now. Um, so, uh, VP of security strategy at Cyber Reason? Um, how did you get, you're what, you said you're 34, right? Yeah. Okay. How, shit, how did that, like, how did you get that? <laughs> like, what was your career trajectory to, to get there? Like, uh, like when and when and how did you enter and to, to make, to get to where you are now? I'm fascinated by that. Um, so, uh, in Israel, uh, military service is mandatory. Mm-hmm because there's a war every other day sure. and uh <laughs> and uh and uh when you're 18 uh you're drafted for a mandatory service of 
I think they shortened it now, but in my time it was uh, three years. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit less now, like two years, eight months or something, I think. And um, what they do is basically um, when you're about 17, you get like the, the, the drafting letter and you need to come in for a bunch of tests where they test your like intelligence and, 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 and all sorts of things. And then they decide whether you are going to uh, do combat stuff like shoot guns or uh, you're going to do other things like whether you're going to be like logistic stuff like, I don't know, driving a truck or, 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 you know, doing doing stuff which don't necessarily involve shooting guns. Um, and if you have background uh, uh, in computers, which, you know, I had, um, you have all sorts of uh, intelligence uh, units that will pretty much pick you up and put you like under ridiculous amounts of tests and exams and, 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 and like really weird shit. And that will decide where you are going to be spending the next three years of your life hmm. doing work and not getting paid. <laughs> um, Yay, so, military. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was, <clears throat> I was lucky enough. Um, I, I got, I got called into this weird non nondescript building in the outskirts of Tel Aviv, and it was all civilians. Now, like no one with military, no one in military uniform, and and they were all like older, like they were in their forties, fifties, like not people who are in the age of like you know active mandatory service soldiers, which is what you usually see in those situations. And I was there for like. I came there like three days in a row for various tests and polygraphs and whatever. And, and then they told me, um, okay, you got in. And I didn't even know where I got into. Uh, and then a few months after I got drafted, I did my, uh, basic training in the military. So they taught me how to shoot a gun and stuff. And, and then, <laughs> Uh, you know, so it's 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 um, it's like a boot camp base in like the south of Israel in the desert. Like we had rockets falling sure. on us because we're right on the border with Gaza, so we had like rockets falling us on us the entire time. And it's the final day of boot camp, and there's like military buses coming to take all the different people to their respective units where mm -hmm. they're going to be. Um, and there's like a bunch of buses, and then there's like one white Volvo S60 <laughs> that was waiting for me. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, it was really strange. <laughs> and it's like this dude, it's like this 50 year old dude who's a driver, and he's like, I came to pick you up. And I'm like, where are we going? <laughs> he says, Well, you'll see. Did it have free candy and, written on the uh, side of it? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was a really weird ride. Uh, and uh, I ended up uh, uh, basically uh, 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 joining one of our government intelligence agencies, mm -hmm. uh, sort of like, uh, well, it's like sort of like the equivalent of the CIA, I guess. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and I got there and I filled various uh, uh, security research roles, uh, uh, which I obviously can talk too much or at all about. Right, no. Uh, I, I don't want to die. <laughs> no. no, it's just boring. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> I mean, you die of boredom. And um, and I ended up staying there for nine years in total. So um, two, two of those years uh, were uh, my mandatory military service. Uh, and I didn't complete a uh, full three years because I got, uh, I got sick uh uh with like um with a weird disease in the middle of my service and the army had to like discharge me uh and then they're like oh yeah we don't want you to go so you know yesterday you were earning nothing um tomorrow we'll be hiring you as like an employee and you'll actually have a salary so that was really cool oh yeah uh, but, yeah like i finally started getting paid always make shit um, better yeah so I, I i stayed there for nine years uh doing lots of security research stuff like i i did so many things i i i i, I uh did vulnerability research exploit development um i i i reverse engineered software and hardware and and, and communication protocols and and i i did a lot of things you do a lot of things in that place in nine years and like 
got involved with like things that are straight up like from the movies and it was really interesting uh but after nine years i felt like i needed to do something different sure and uh that's a good, stre uh, that's, that's a good I, stretch for anybody like yeah, shit. yeah uh no it was just like i just you know you go to the same place for nine years and you drive the same traffic and yeah it's like, oh. enough and, and and i didn't really get along with my boss at that time and i was like yeah i think i'm done I think yeah I'm done. i think i'm ready to move on and um and uh uh what it, what happened was i opened a linkedin account uh i didn't have linkedin i was hardly on social media uh because you know i i, I had to maintain uh like yeah. I had a very high skill security clearance and i had to be like sort of invisible and i would i would go to all sorts of places and i you know it's 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 that kind of lifestyle uh and uh, i opened my linkedin account and the first message i got was from cyber reasons founder who actually used to work with me there uh and uh it was like after he, it was after um after cyber reason uh uh was around for like i think a year and a half or two years and he said wow uh since when are, are you on linkedin are you leaving like are you leaving the government and i'm like um yeah i think i'm ready to make the move and he's like why won't you come work for cyber reason and i'm like uh thanks but i'll pass <laughs> <laughs> uh so eventually he managed to convince me to come in for an interview and i and i came in for an interview and 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 i saw what was then a very early uh uh, uh version of of the product and i was like uh and and i came from the world of like from the world of, of linux and, and bsd as i said and and, and and exploit development for these systems and like totally not uh, 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 with what Cyber Reason back then, with uh, what totally what wasn't with what Cyber Reason did back then, which was mostly Windows. Mm -hmm. And said, yeah, you know what, we're going to hire you and you're going to build out like our Linux research and do that kind of things. I said, okay, but in the meantime, you'll have to learn some some Windows stuff. So I joined the, I joined as a senior security researcher and with with like zero knowledge in in in, in Windows whatsoever, and I started uh, like. And, and, and I was sitting in a room with like really two of the best security researchers I've ever met. The two of them still work at Cyber Reason. They were the first, like literally employee number zero and one mm -hmm. of the company. Uh, two very good friends of mine. Uh, uh, and I was just, you know, sitting with them in the room and like learning so much. And and, and I was in, in the company when it was like super small, it was just like 15 of us. There's always, there's over, I think there's around 700 of us today worldwide like all over the world. Um, and oh, back then it was just like 15 people in like a shitty office in Tel Aviv. And uh, and I, I learned a lot. And then, you know, when the opportunity, uh, when the opportunity came to move to Boston, uh, by then I had already led um, uh, our uh, Linux and, and Mac security research. And I moved to Boston uh, and I sort of, started doing like public facing research like I would do a lot of blogs mm -hmm. and, and, and I speak at a lot of conferences and suddenly I had like the ability to talk about my work and 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 and, and share stuff which I always like I really like I enjoy uh, sharing and, and, and my knowledge and, and, and teaching other people and learning and being a part of this thing so and finally I could do it because before that you know in my old work I could not so um, I became like really out there. Um, and then I, I, I sat uh, for a conversation with our CEO and I said, you know, we need to um, we need to have like a research, um, uh, like a brand, like a separate brand. Uh, uh, and we need to have like a research team that works solely on like, you know, threat intelligence and malware analysis and writing reports for our customers, some of them should be blog posts, presenting at conferences, all of those things, like we need to do it. And, uh, <clears throat> and he said, well, uh, do it. <laughs> yeah. So I founded uh, the Nocturnus team uh, at Cyber Reason. So um, I, I founded it, uh, uh, helped hiring some people and, and build, build the research outfit. And then uh, we build like an IR service and, 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 and a research service. And like, we have a bunch of services now uh, under the Nocturnus umbrella. And uh, at that point, I was like, you know, senior director of something. Yeah. It's, it's a startup. So, you know, everybody. Sure. Is, yeah. Everybody's got it there. Yeah. Everybody is like, you know, the CEO of the world. 
Yeah, it's and, like working uh, in banking. Like everybody's a VP and nobody's a VP. Yeah. So uh, about uh, was the end of 2019. I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to do the next thing because in the in the past three-ish years, I was heavily involved in Nocturnus, like leading it and and, and working on investigations of incidents that we had with our customers and we had this insane uh, uh, uncovering of Operation Soft Cell last year uh, where we uh, uh, found that uh, like a, 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 we found that China was hacking all sorts of uh, uh, cellular providers all over the world the hell you years. say yeah <laughs> I'm in, like we found, incredulous sir yes <laughs> like we found out we found evidence that they were in one of the places for at least seven years, at least. I think there, it's, it was more than seven years, but it was seven years where they were like siphoning out like 200 gigs of data at sure. a time. Yeah. Like crazy stuff. Um, it's probably over DNS. But after that, after that, after that blew up and, you know, I had my, my fair share of, of being in the spotlight, which honestly, I don't really like. I discovered that. So after not fetch, you happened uh, like in like, of uh, one one night i was like all over and like i had journalists interviewing me and sure. like i gained like ten thousand new followers on twitter and it was just insane like my phone wouldn't stop ringing and and andy greenberg uh, wrote the sandworm book and there's like half a chapter just talks about me there it's like it's really weird it, i have i haven't listened to it yet but i have it on my audible i haven't uh, shit oh it's great they actually pronounced my name right it's awesome ah uh, fuck <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was not that was not i am dread by the way I, I i am dreading signing off because i know i'm gonna fuck it up <laughs> no 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 don't worry and um i meet and uh, yeah that's right and uh, it means it means friend yeah um well you're very friendly yeah. guy you're very personable like there's uh -huh. a there, there's a reason you were probably out in front for so many years is because you're fucking good at it yeah, but you know, I, I would I would go like if you've seen my talks, like I would just go on stage and swear. Uh, like I would get very nervous. Like I I, that's I, would, my crutch. I would get very very nervous, and I have no like I don't have any stage fright. Like you can see behind me, like I I played I play music, I played in bands, like I I, I played shows in front of three thousand people. Like I'm not I'm not shy, but you know, being on stage when you have so many people just looking at 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 something you worked on for so long. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna fuck it up, I'm gonna fuck it up, I'm gonna fuck it up. Uh, so I just get nervous and I start swearing. So all of my all of my slides or all of my talks actually, if you find them on yeah. YouTube, it's just me like swearing. Yeah. And then you do it, bitch shit. Then yeah. oh fuck that. Like, that's this fucking entire, thing like, over here. <laughs> no, mine too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I am uh, so, I uh, I am I am wholly uh, uh, shocked that when I do company based things and training videos and uh and and like i actually do a i do a version of this stream for gigamon uh branded for them and i am shocked when i can get through an entire episode and not have to edit out something i said <laughs> yeah so when i when i spoke at uh, i spoke at virus bulletin a couple of times and 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 uh uh, uh martin who was uh, he's not there anymore but he used to run virus bulletin basically he, he would always ask him like hey you know, I love your stuff and, and your research is awesome and you're such a nice guy. Yep. Hey, but can you, can you make it more family appropriate? I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do my best. And then, <laughs> I think it was Montreal, two years ago, I spoke at, at Virus Bulletin and I, and I talked about some adware I found and I found like the company behind the adware mm -hmm. and the people behind the adware and everything. And, uh, and then at the end, and like right at the end, like two people approached the station like, Hi, uh, we are from that company, ah. and I just went and I just went through the microphone. Oh, fuck me! <laughs> and like every, everyone just laughed. <laughs> uh, yeah, you almost made so, it. <laughs> yeah, so I did those things. I did those things, but then I was like, okay, you know, like I love I love doing this thing, but I feel like I want to go back to like working on the product sure. and, and 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 you know get made getting the product better, working more with R&D, with our R&D, with, 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 you know, just being a part. I really enjoyed being a part of building, building the product. And I felt like, you know, I've, I've been building, I've been helping building the brand because 
we can all talk about, you know, all of these companies, whether it's Cyber Reason or Kaspersky or any security company that has this shtick of a separate security brand. So like Kaspersky has great mm -hmm. Palo Alto at 42 and we have Nocturnus and Checkpoint has Checkpoint Research, like all of the companies have this. And at the end of the day, it's cool. And, and, you know, it's cool to see people presenting research and it's cool to see smart people write blogs. But at the end of the day, it's a tool for marketing. And, and, and it's, it's, I call it like marketing without marketing. It, it is what it is. Like you can't, you can't deny it. Sure. And I felt like after three years of being heavily involved with like pretty much marketing, like, you know, building the brand and, 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 and training and training new people and helping building our service organization. It was like, ah, I need to go back to like do some like R and D work. Like I missed that. Right. So, um, that's, that's, that's what I'm working on now. I'm, I'm, I'm Actually, I'm also, uh, I stepped down, I asked to step down uh, from running Nocturnus, so I'm no longer running it. Um, and uh, and uh, I think that pretty soon I'll be completely uh, uh, out of Nocturnus and I will transition uh, transition back into um, into working on like our product and, and, and new products and, 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 and like, you know, helping building the, the 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 product again as opposed to like being more involved in outcome facing stuff like I, I'm, I'm still i'll still do it but not as much right i'll tell you what, one of the things that uh that i i still kick myself over uh of not pursuing is i was in between jobs at one point because uh, surprise mandy and laid me off for a second time um so but I, I by that point I, I had I knew quite a few more people and I had a lot more options and I was taking a lot of interviews. I think I had like four interviews a day for a month straight and it was a very good position to be in. And one of those spots that I was interviewing for was at Cyber Reason. But I had never oh, no way. Yeah, I, but I had never heard of them because what I had that? Uh, I do I don't remember. This is like four years ago by this point almost, three or four years ago. Oh wow. Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah, that's completely different company yeah uh well and that's the thing like i had been sequestered in uh so before that i was at uh i was in ge which is a giant machine and then i went back to work for mandiant which is very service oriented so you're selling your, their services and things like that um so when i finally got back into the job market I wasn't aware of things like Fusion X. I wasn't aware of things like Cyber Reason and Squirrel and, and these types of places. And so I didn't know, I didn't, and I didn't take them as seriously back then because uh, it, it really did sound like, you know, very startup-y, schmarmy, like, I don't fucking know what you do. And, you, and literally every vendor I talked to, because it was like the threat hunting type space and, 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 and research and things like that, they all sounded the same. Every the same. Jesus, yeah. every job that I talked to in in that sphere, they all had the same pitch about machine learning, AI, and this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, at a certain point, I didn't remember who I had talked to because they all fucking, and, and I was like, well, I, I don't know them, and I, I never pursued a second round or whatever. And damn, dude, like, fast forward, I really wish I had now <laughs> because, uh, because I, I, I admire you guys very much. I think that if you would have joined four years ago, you wouldn't have stayed. No, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's it's one of the one of the insane things about Cyber Reason is that it 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 changes like on like a, a monthly basis mm -hmm. because we're growing. Like as I said, when I joined six years ago, it was fifteen people. Uh, when I moved to the U.S. four years ago, we were a hundred people mm -hmm. or eighty people. Now we're seven hundred. Right. That's great. So, That's crazy. Yeah. Everything changes. Yeah. You know, every time we had another round of funding, the, the company changes. So, so, so I, and, and, and four years ago, I honestly, like, it's one of the things I, I was very, I, I, I'm very open with, with, with our CEO. Like, I, like four years ago, I wouldn't have recommended people to come work for us. Honestly. What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not it's, often you would hear somebody say like I personally would say that. I'd be like, no, I would fucking sucked earlier, but now we're cool. Uh, no, that's that's yeah, refreshing no, to hear. Now it's, now it's awesome. But the, the the place that we were there, like again, it's 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 and and you said it. You hit the nail on the head. Every company sounds the same. And and when you have, you know, back then, like four years ago, we had like I want to say like eight competitors, and and all of them basically do the same thing like we all do the same thing but with a different twist mm -hmm. at least that's how it was back then 
and and it forces it forces companies to just constantly to to be like reactive like nothing is proactive like oh right. this company did that we need to do that oh they did that we need to do that too so the whole market was like that not only us right. i believe that other companies other similar companies with the similar size and growth metrics that we've had which are kind of insane like there there aren't many companies with growth uh, metrics as we have uh, but companies in similar situations in the field would have been probably a nightmare to work at as well so all in all four years later you did i think you did the right choice <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, like I said, now I, I hear from, and it's, it's very much as a lot of us, I think function word of mouth. And like, if something's bullshit, so we know somebody who's there who's like, yeah, 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 it's bullshit. Um, but people who I trust, uh, whose opinions I trust have nothing but great things to say. And I, and I have to say of all the great work that you do, the, the thing I sing praises most of all is the one time I was, I was on a panel at this golf club in New Jersey of there was it was like the Sizzo luncheon and they had asked Gigamon like hey you got somebody that wants to come speak and I was like I don't know about Sizzo shit but I'll make something up so I got so I was there and Cyber Reason was there I forget who who was there um but uh they gave me socks I was like oh these look oh, and yeah. they are the most comfortable goddamn socks like I have like 20 of them Jesus by They're the way great really good Dave Kennedy <laughs> Who's a friend of mine? Dave, get your shit together because Trusted Sec ain't got shit on cyber reason when it comes to socks. It's funny, I just took off like before this thing. I just took off my Trusted Sec uh, socks. No, they they're I nice. I get it. Dave likes his socks. Cyber reason, I love. Like, I need more pairs because I've worn them so much. Like, they're pretty much dead by this point. Uh, yeah, like we're a pretty shit security company, but we rock at socks. <laughs> That's all we want is swag. <laughs> God damn it, I just want somebody to make like sweatpants. Give me pajamas I can wear at a con, and I swear to God, I'll sign up for every marketing thing you people are gonna fucking I do. I am messaging. I am messaging our, our chief marketing officer right That's now. All I want. Friend. Give me either a PJ set or some nice sweats that I can rock up, and I, I will sit through every goddamn demo you want me to. I promise. Done. <laughs> Done. I will. I. I'm, I promise to keep you updated on this. I promise. Have my word. Um, dude, I could talk to you fucking all night. I swear to God. But um, I don't want to do too much of a good thing because I want to have you back and talk about other things a different time. What I want to leave with is, uh, what advice? And I, I like asking smart people this question. What advice would you have? Because uh, I tend to have a lot of followers and and and, and watchers of the show that are new or in between gigs or trying to get into industry and, or not even industry that they just want to be hackers. Right. And, and, and they want to learn shit. What, what do you say to, to people who are just coming up and it doesn't have to be like a young person. Like I, I didn't, I didn't get into hacking until I was in my thirties. Right. I'm almost 40 now, but, um, so I, I grinded by just figuring it out on my own and like finding people and that's how I am now. What advice would you give to somebody who's new coming out of college or changing careers or something about how to how to learn and and, how, and just how to how to exist in this sphere? So it's it's a good question and um, I you. can tell you that you know where I'm where I'm from if you're talking about the states it's very different where I'm from because mm -hmm. where I'm from you have a lot of people that's that that gained their experience in the military mm -hmm. so you'll have like you have people 21 years old finishing their mandatory three years if they haven't signed for more uh so they're leaving in 21 with three years of insane experience so a lot of those people you know on their 21st birthday they have reverse engineered they hacked they 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 can read and write assembly and c plus plus and like you know all of those languages where in the U.S. it's very different uh, because, you know, you don't have this, this this part where you finish high school and you go to the military. Um, and then you have people coming out of college very confused because they teach. I, I So I didn't go to like I don't have a degree. I didn't graduate high school. So like all of these concepts are, are very strange for me. I learned everything by myself. But, you know, talking to people and, and obviously I know I know the market and I know how things uh, go. You have people like coming out of college and they're like, oh my God, I learned like programming and I learned Java and I learned like 
all sorts of weird concepts in math and how do I apply this to security? Like I want to hack shit. Like there's good money in security. I want to work in security. And 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 the 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 world we live in today with regards to everything, but like let's talk about security, it's a blessing and a curse because you know when you and I uh, uh, were growing up, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have you know, I didn't have the internet up until I was like 14, 13. Same, yeah. So like yeah, uh, 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 so and you know when when I had the internet it was very different than what it is today. Uh, you didn't have access to all of this uh, content. So um, when people today want to get into security, there is it's like a giant fire hose of crap that just washes you with information. And there's so much and, and, and it's kind of hard to deal with. Like when I talk to uh, 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 I, I try to do some mentoring on, on, on uh, the, the, the free time that I have between making music and, 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 and working at Cyber Reason and uh, trying to maintain a family life. Okay. Um, and, and I always tell people like, you first need to understand what it is that interests you because mm -hmm. saying security or hacking or research, it's too broad. Yeah. Like some people really want to focus on web. Some people like web security. Some people want to focus on hardware hacking. Some people want to focus on malware analysis. Some people want to do exploit development for uh, iPhones. Like there's so much things, there's so much stuff and, and all of those things, they're very different. Like web security, a lot of it is very different from you know malware, reverse engineering, or 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 um, or or exploit development for uh, something that's not web based. So uh, it's it's different. It's different concepts. It's different programming language. It's different paradigms of thinking. So I would I would advise these people to first talk to someone that does it. Like I have no problem. Like. My DMs on Twitter are not open because people are crazy. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I, I got like violent threats for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but uh, so my DMs are closed. But I'm always, uh, I, I try to be responsive if people like at me and ask questions. So I, I, I have no problem uh, uh, helping if I can. Uh, uh, so I always say first you need to understand what it is that that you're interested in like as i said uh, web or 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 or, or uh, ios security or whatever but find first of all find what it is that interests you and if you can't decide there's youtube there's so much information so many talks from 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 defcon and black hat and all of the other conferences you can watch me swear uh, on stage. I, I cannot and, wait to go find these videos. Like, like I, I I've... Oh, look, look for my look for my talk at DerbyCon about the uh, exploits I found in web cameras. It's called uh, Peekaboo. I own you. Look for that at, from DerbyCon a few years ago. My like I was like, oh, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in demo gods, and my demo like blew up. <laughs> like it didn't work, and I was like fixing it in the middle of the talk. Like it was madness, and I was sweating profusely and swearing throughout the whole thing um and uh it was also the first time I, I think yeah it was the first time i talked at DerbyCon, and then dave came with a fucking uh, hot can of, of v8 mm. it was disgusting. and then he gave me zima i think mm. it was um yeah so 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 um I, i'll get to the point there's a lot of information out there and and it's very it's overwhelming it's really it's overwhelming and i've been doing this for a while and it's overwhelming to me uh so find your niche try to find you know what interests you what 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 sparks your imagination talk to someone that, that does it like there's tons of people like if there's one thing i can say you know and and, and there's a lot of good people uh, 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 in security and a lot of them like are really they really like to talk about it and, and they're excited about it and they want to share and they want to teach other people and really like it's 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 there's no better time to get into security than the present like there's so much information out there so figure out what it is that 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 you want to learn like what field exactly uh, talk to someone that could give you pointers someone experienced that can help you and just work on learning it like you have things like you have challenges like uh hack the box and all of those things like a lot of programs where you can you can actually get practical experience on hacking things and and learning how to think 
uh, uh, creatively. I like to say that you, you you don't need to learn how to think outside of the box. You need to just throw the box outside the window <laughs> and ignore it. Like that's that's. Uh, I had a meeting with our research team yesterday, and 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 you know we were trying to figure something with the Linux kernel, and then I said, you know what, we're thinking. You know, let's not think outside the box. Let's throw the box altogether out the window. Yeah, fuck and, the box. And, 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 yeah, fuck the box. That should be. That should. Be, oh no, that actually sounds like a porn site or something. Like, I want <laughs> well, to like hack the box, but that sounds like. No, porn. no. I was gonna say, w w w if it's not already a thing, we should start fuck the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just hope you won't get a cease and desist from from them from hack the box. Oh, come at me, bros. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I I really think like there's so much uh, uh there's so much uh, uh there's so much information out there on the internet. And, so many people who are writing blogs and tutorials and, and YouTube videos, like seriously, just pick pick a subject and always be curious. Just like always ask questions, always doubt what you're seeing. Nothing is unhackable. And and I think in in that same vein, listen, I know. Uh, so I, I never asked you. Um, I, I know you've been to DefCon, but like how many? Uh, uh, my first one was in 2011. So I've been in, I've been three years in a row. So 2011, 12, and 13. That was when I was still working for the government. I wasn't in 2014, but I was in 15. And then 17, 18, and 19. So, so, so and, and not to say that anybody who's only been once has less of a, has less of an emotional attachment, but um, I know it's hard for a lot of us because I have a very emotional attachment to DEF CON. I've been, I don't know, this is this would have been my fifth year um, that like now we can't go and we can't be there. However, in the same sphere as everything you just talked about, it is free this year. We can't be there, it's safe mode. So if you wanna learn, and, and you had just mentioned it, hardware hacking, uh, they, they have all the villages, the, the aviation village, the, the bio, all of these things, if you're talking about hardware hacking this year at DEF CON, I, I, as I said, uh, my, 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 one of my closest friends, he's my oldest friend, we're, we're friends since kindergarten, his name is uh, Gal Zror, he's from Israel. Uh, he has, he's going to have an amazing talk, which is uh, part two of his talk that he gave at uh, uh, Chaos Computer Club in Germany a few months ago. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he, so other than the fact that we were friends since kindergarten, we also used to work together in my previous job doing hacking. And he found, I don't know how many, like over 10 or 15 vulnerabilities in um, uh, uh, Ruckus products, mm -hmm. uh, Wi-Fi products. So like he basically found like arbitrary code execution, remote code execution on pretty much their entire product line. And he's going to talk about that uh, on this year's DEF CON. And it's going to be an insane talk. Yeah. And, and check out his first one from from CCC from a few months ago. Like it's hardware hacking, it's software hacking, it has everything. It's really cool. Yeah. So there's this. Yeah, I I, I can't wait. And so I'm I'm a I'm a DefCon sock goon. So like we'll be moderating and things like that. And we have my contest. And like I'm still getting to do a whole bunch of shit. But for anybody who is within earshot, whether right now or you're watching this later, or hopefully I get my shit together and put it up on iTunes for the fucking whatever. It is a maybe hopefully just a once in a lifetime opportunity of having all of it free you can register right now defcon is free join the um, defcon discord and you can see and hear and experience not exactly what defcon is in person but you if you have never had a chance to go and see all this stuff and experience it now is an absolute epic time to do it so that is if there's a silver lining it's that it's that if you haven't gotten the chance, and I, I could go for 20 years and never see everything. Um, it's just like just like being in are, New York are City. You, are you still, uh, you live in New Jersey, right? Uh, right over the border in uh, PA. Okay, so for you to get to Vegas, it's like what, a four hour flight? Like five, yeah, five, five and a half. Yeah. So when I lived in Israel, getting to, get to, De getting to DEFCON for me was uh, a 12 hour flight to either Philadelphia or New York. Oh, and then uh, over. And then and then another five. Oh, I want to hang myself just so thinking about that. Like 20 hours door to door. Uh, the time difference. So Vegas is 10 hours behind Israel. So I would be jet lagged as fuck. Yeah. For a week. And I would still enjoy it. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
And, and I hate Vegas. I hate Vegas. Like, do you really? Loathe it. Uh, I don't think it's that bad. Well, then again, again, I have very set, like my wife and I got married in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay um, and then DEF CON. So I have a very strong sentimental. I can't hate it that much because it. I have nothing but positive memories from it. Uh, it, was, it was great. I felt I felt at home. It was like it was well, yeah, you it's know, a fucking I, desert. That, yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's the only place, you know, no, that was Black Hat. Black Hat was the only place uh, where I said, because I usually don't say that I'm from Israel because, no. you know, people have their opinions. Uh, but Black Hat was the first place where I said uh, at lunch, you know, because I went to trainings and then everybody eats lunch together. And then, you know, we started talking, oh, where are you from? Like, because I had my name on the thing. No. Where are you from? Like, Israel. Oh, it, because that, that was right after Stuxnet. Oh, oh come sit with us. <laughs> By all means. Yeah. On Come, yeah. And then every Israeli had something to do with Stuxnet. Like that was that was like the year of Stuxnet. So every Israeli people saw, oh, dude, tell us more about Stuxnet. Did you write it? No, no, bitch. That was the CIA did it. Um, by the way, speaking of uh, speaking of that, real quick, um, have you do you listen to uh, Darknet Diaries? Uh, yeah, and also to so uh, Cyber Reason has their own uh, podcast, and sometimes they do episode swaps. So uh, oh, Malik, I didn't know that. Like, yeah, malicious life. Malicious oh, dog life. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes they do episode swaps, so the, the two of them are really good. Yeah, and he he did a whole three part series on um, Unit A two hundred. I'll say it. You don't have to say it. Uh, Unit A two hundred of 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 Stuxnet, and there was a third one. They were all really, really, really good. Um, so I highly recommend that to people um, if if they want to if they want more information on like Stuxnet and UNA two hundred and things like that. Um, I said they were good. I, I I know what I heard from Darknet Diaries, so like I don't, I don't purport to be an expert on it. Oh, I, I I haven't listened to that one. Okay, oh, it's so. yeah. I would actually be interested in whatever reaction that you did have to it. Um, but anyway, um, Amit, my friend, this has been amazing. This was like. I knew it would be good. I knew I would have fun with you. I didn't think I'd have this much fun, dude. You're so engaging. Um, yeah, I can't wait to have you on again. Like you, you actually brought the idea up to me like months and months ago, and I never got my shit together. And I'm so fucking angry now because I could have had this much fun back then. Um, for anybody who wants to follow him, I have his at. It's been up the whole time. It's uh, at zero x uh, Amit and uh, VP at Cyber Reason, um, and just a fucking sweetheart of a man. Uh, of all the people that I can't wait to see when the shit kind of lifts a little bit more, uh, definitely you, my friend. Um, so uh, until next time, um, hang out a little bit after I close out here, um, and then we'll chat a little bit more uh, on the side. And uh, everybody else in the chat, thank you so much for being in here. Uh, I'm here every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern. The YouTube is youtube.com slash second order chaos. You can see all of my past interviews up there with awesome people uh, like my friend here. Um, and also the fuckery that I do from time to time. So if you like it, by all means, please subscribe. Uh, subscribe on here. Uh, follow me. I do appreciate it. And again, thank you so much, brother. And thanks for having me. This was, this was fun. We are. Are we still on? The keyboard. <laughs> Who cares? Mics are always open. Everybody knows that. How many ill-adjusted toddlers are out there? Oh, they're leaning to one side. They're it's like the running joke that I keep my mics cracked. <laughs> <laughs> Get off the stage, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> I got my man.
And you never say no in improv.